Hi there, welcome to episode 04, Creating the Fluid Simulation. To create the simulation, we need a dynamic context. To create it, press Staff, type dot .network and press Enter twice. Rename it as Splash Sim and double click or press the I key to dive inside. At the moment, we only have an output node. Now, the main ingredients for any simulation are an object to hold the simulation data. It can be, for instance, a flip or a pyro object. Volume sources to import emitters or custom fields. Of course, the solver, for instance, a flip solver or a pyro solver and you could also have collision objects and forces. Let's start. To create a flip object, press Tab, type flip object and press Enter twice. To create a volume source, press Tab, type volume source and press Enter twice. To create a flip solver, press Tab, type flip solver and press Enter twice. To add a gravity force, press Tab, type Gravity and press Enter twice. Now, connect the flip object to the first input port of the solver and the volume source to the last port of the solver. Connect the output of the solver to the gravity force and the output of the gravity force to the output node. Press the L key to arrange the layout and the H key to home all the nodes. The connections are done. Now we need to specify parameters in the nodes. Select the flip object node. Here we need to link the particle separation parameter of this node to the same parameter of the flip source of the emitter. To do this, right click on the particle separation parameter and select Copy Parameter. Now, go to the Flip Source node in the Emitter object. Right-click on the Particle Separation parameter and select Paste Relative References. OK, now both parameters are linked. Hide the reference grid and return to the DOP network to the Flip Object node. To have a better visualization, go to the guide staff and then to the particles staff. Change the visualization to particles. But we don't need this cube of particles. Go to the initial data tab and delete the soap path. Now, in the volume source node, change the initialize menu to source flip and in the soap path, search for our emitter and select the OUT node. OK, now we can see our emitter particles in the dynamic context. In the Flip Solver node, the first thing to adjust is the size of the container of the simulation. Go to the Volume Motion tab and then to the Volume Limits tab. Here you can see that the volume size is too big. In the viewport, press Enter and you can see the limits of the container and you can use the handles to adjust the size or you can enter values in the box size and box center parameters let's enter values in the viewport press the spacebar and the H key to frame the content. In the timeline, in the global animation options, change the end frame of the animation to 120. And activate the real time toggle to have a correct frame rate representation. Now, press play to run the simulation. OK. We have something.
the blue line indicates that the simulation has been cached in memory. Go to the Flip Object node. Let's increase the resolution by decreasing the particle separation parameter from 0.1 to 0.05. When you change any parameter, the memory cache is lost. Play the simulation. We have a quiet uniform flow. Remember that we need a slow motion effect of a viscous fluid. If we go to the flip solver in the Substeps tab, we have the time scale parameter. And this parameter can be used to control how slow or fast run the simulation. As we need a very slow motion, let's reduce it to 0.1. Play the simulation. Okay, we have the slow motion effect, but it's taking too much time. To speed up the process, what we can do is initially run the simulation at normal speed and then reduce the speed to the slow value. Return the time scale to 1 and play the simulation. In about 30 frames, the stream of fluid has crossed the bounding box. So, Let's simulate at the time scale of 1 until frame 35 and then in frame 36 change it to 0.1. In this way the first 35 frames are used as a pre-roll. Go to frame 35 and press Alt and left click on the time scale parameter to set a keyframe. Now go to frame 36 change the value to 0.1 and also press Alt and left click to set a keyframe. You can check the animation curve in the animation editor. Press F to frame the curve. Return to the scene view and play the simulation. It's ok, as expected, the fluid moves at normal speed until frame 35 and then it moves in slow motion. In the next video, we are going to set up the collision between the fluid and the raspberry. Thank you for watching this video, I'll see you soon in the next one.